simple random sample of size n is drawn from a population that is normally distributed. The sample mean x bar is found to be 105. Sample standard deviation of s is found to be 10. We're going to construct some of these sample, these um, confidence intervals. So construct a 96% interval around uh, the mu if the sample size is 19. And then the same interval, 96%, if the sample size is 27. And then a 98% if the sample size is 19. And could we have computed a confidence interval A through C if the population had not been normally distributed? Okay. So we'll do this both on the TI and on StatCrunch. So in the TI, press stat. This is, um, we're talking about mean, so we're gonna be looking at a T interval. So not a T test. We'll do that later, T interval, number eight. So you have a, a choice here, it's either the data or stats. So if you have the raw data, you're gonna select data. Did, I did not put anything into list one, did I? So it's gotta be stats. And I'm given the summary statistics. So X bar, it says is 105. Standard deviation is said to be 10. Now here, part A, it says N is 19. And it says we want a 96% confidence interval. Calculate, there's our interval. So the lower bound, and we're gonna um, round to one decimal place. So 99.9. .9. And the upper bound is 110.1. Construct a 96% confidence interval about mu if the sample size is 27. So the only thing that changed there was my sample size. So let's go back to test, go down to number eight, the T interval. Okay, so everything else stays the same, except now we're changing this N from 19 to 27. So we're increasing the sample size. Everything else stays the same. So a natural question would be, what do you expect is gonna happen to the interval? So I have a sort of a guess in mind when you're when you're doing these, sort of to anticipate. Do you expect the interval to become narrower as I increase the sample size or to become wider? Let's take a look. So now we're at 100.8 and 109.2. So our interval actually became narrower as I increased the sample size. And we sort of should have expected that from all of our work we did with proportions earlier. So as the sample size increases, the margin of error decreases. So now for part C, the 98% confidence interval. So let's go back in here. Stat, test, number eight, T interval still. Okay, so what changed here? We have sample sizes back to the 19, what it was in part A. And this time our confidence level is gonna change to 98%. And again, I imagine the next natural question is gonna be, what do you expect is gonna to happen to the intervals? I increase the confidence level. And we're comparing it to, we're gonna be comparing it to A. So let's go ahead and write it down. The interval is from 99 um, to one decimal, so 99.1 to 110.9. So again, we're comparing part A because the only thing that has here, I imagine, so we're doing comparing results to part A. How does the increase seeing the level of confidence affect the margin of error? So we're looking at the width of the interval here. So if we go from 99.9 .9 to 110.1, here's 99.1, 110.9. So what happened when we increased our interval? I mean, look at each of the upper and lower bounds. It got larger, right? 110.9 is a little bit larger than 110.1. 99.1 is a little lower than 99.9. So as the percent of confidence increases, the size of the interval 
also increases. Could we have computed the confidence interval in parts A through C if the population had not been normally distributed? So we weren't given the actual raw data here, right? So ordinarily, if we have these small sample sizes, small below 30, um, we would go ahead and plot those to see if they were roughly symmetric, roughly unimodal, didn't have a bunch of peaks and things like that, wasn't heavily skewed. Uh, we don't. So the at this point, the, all we need to say is the population would need to be normally distributed. So we would say, no, the population needs to be normally distributed. If we had larger ends, if we had, um, you know, in above 30, above 40, uh, we'd be okay. Even then, I like plotting that out to make sure there are no major departures from uh, normality. Okay, hope that helps. In StatCrunch, real quick, we're going to go to Stat, TSTAT. We have one sample, and we just have summary data. And then we just put all this in. So the sample mean. So I just put sample mean in 105, sample standard deviation of 10. We're just going to do this first one. They're all done the same. Um, sample size is 19, confidence interval, and we are doing a 96% confidence interval. And then press compute. And there we go. Same interval that we obtained when we did this on the calculator. 99.9 .9 and 110.1. Hope that helps.